This episode of Oldie Buddy Goody is brought to you by Shakespeare Ghostbusters on This Week Only in Melbourne at the Motley Bauhaus. Starting from Tuesday the 31st until the 4th of November, join friends of the show Rob Lloyd, Danny McGinley, Zach Rose, and me as we retell the popular 80s horror comedy as if it was written by the Bard himself. Get your tickets right now, there's a link in the episode description. Hope to see you there! Imagine a year where a man makes an object that breaks physics and death isn't real. Oh my god, Zach, what year is that? We're getting deep on the podcast. <laughs> Absolutely, death doesn't exist in this realm, apparently. Uh, it is 1961. Welcome to Oldie But A Goodie. Oh, my name's Sandro. I'm out of the void. Last week I was stuck in a void. This week I'm in 1961 walking around. I'm walking around London because it's 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 the end of October, almost November. Doctor Who months. I've got, I've got to be in London. I'm walking around London. Um, no idea where the orphan is that I usually hang out with, but I'm walking around London and I'm walking into a chemist because I'm going to talk about the absent-minded professor and I need some crazy pills. I don't know. <laughs> I'm walking into this chemist. Hello there, Mr. Chemist. Oh, good day to you, sir. Hello. Can I have some crazy pills, please? <laughs> some crazy pills? Why yes. on earth would you need those? Because <laughs> my podcast co-host picked a movie that I, I need I need crazy pills to get through because this movie took me over 48 hours to watch, and that's not a joke. <laughs> wow, wow, okay. Sounds like it gave you a headache. Yeah, it did indeed. It did indeed. Anyway, what's your name? Well, I'm, I'm Stuart Adams. Uh, Stuart pleasure Adams. to meet you. I uh, I actually have something for that headache of yours. You know? Oh, do you? What is it? Well, I just invented this new painkiller uh, with a bunch of uh, colleagues of mine. It's called ibuprofen. Oh, I like to take that all the time. Yeah, you what? But it just yes. I just invented it though. I mean, I I've, I've never had that before. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe you've already taken the crazy pills. Yeah. Have some ibuprofen, maybe that. Yum, be yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Why? This is going to make talking about this movie so much more e- easier. Ah, oh, fantastic! I'm glad you could help. This business transaction has gone well, and nothing has gone wrong in this space of time. Somebody call. Whoa, no! <laughs> ah, Adams, I see that you're still here, peddling your inferior ways in this so-called chemist of yours. Oh, Mr. Roy, don't come here with your voodoo nonsense. Voodoo? (laughs) That is racial appropriation. (laughs) And even though it is 1961... Yeah, it's 1961, so that's totally (laughs) canon. Even though it is 1961, I, for one, will not stand for it. You, young man, I hear that you are in need of some sort of crazy pills. That's right. I am in need of crazy pills. Well, I have this thing called psychedelic drugs that will work (laughs) perfectly for you. I thought you were going to have paracetamol to (laughs) to go against his ibuprofen, but no, you just got drugs. No, 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 no. If you're playing it safe, in this so-called sham of a chemist, sure, you can have your paracetamol, maybe have a glass of milk before you go to bed with a cookie, or you can come out here and hang out here with the real shit, all right? <laughs> oh, my goodness I mean, me. doctors were just giving out morphine to everyone, just like <laughs> cocaine and everything back in the day. It is the 1960s. <laughs> well, I guess I'll have some... What in particular are you peddling? <laughs> just morphine or like... I've got everything that you could desire. I could break <laughs> out into a song about see my chest of drugs, but I think we might be sued by Disney. And considering we're already doing a Disney film and we're probably going to rip it to shreds, we don't want to. We don't want to get the ire of Bob Iger or the Iger. Uh-huh. Iger. And- Thank you very much. Uh-huh. Not only do I give you hardcore drugs, I also give you puns and wordplay. <laughs> <laughs> Some say they have the same effects. Yes. Yeah. Wow. It is truly a miracle over in my land of chemicals. Come, 
Join me in the land of chemicals. <laughs> oh my god, Zach is transforming! And that other chemist has turned into Rob Lloyd, and what? that other chemist is Zach, uh, is Zach now. What? Hello. What's going on? Why do I feel great? I feel great. You're a chemist and you're very healthy, I guess. Oh, okay. Podcasting is truly the magical medium where your imagination <laughs> can soar. I can imagine a world where I don't have a headache because I took <laughs> ibuprofen. Wow. Wow. What an incredible time. Oh, hey, Rob Lloyd. What are you doing here? Oh, look, as always, I'm here to spruik something. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> and anytime I need to spruik something, uh, Sandra gives me homework, so I have to sit and watch an obscure movie from the 1960s. It's true. Whenever you don't have to spruik something, I give you a movie that you want to do. And then whenever <laughs> you do have to spruik something, I'm like, here, watch Crackers. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's very much you you can come on and spruik this show, Rob, but you've got to watch Crackers <laughs> yeah, and we'll yeah. never actually review the fucking film. Fa- a fate worse than death. Well, um, on this week's podcast, we're in 1961, and we're talking about a movie that I have seen before. Um, mm. When I was but a child, I saw it once and went, never need to see that again. But <laughs> here we are, rewatching it, and it's The Absent-Minded Professor, also known as the original Flubber. Woo! Uh, yeah, Rob Lloyd, you're here to talk about it. You are doing so many shows at the moment. I'm, uh, d- I'm a lot of them with me as well. Uh, we're, we're doing Shakespeare <laughs> Ghostbusters, which actually opens tomorrow as of the release of this of this episode. Uh, which is uh, the follow-up to Shakespeare Aliens. It's Ghostbusters, but Shakespeare. That's right, that's right. And we open on Halloween. It's a Halloween miracle. We're taking the 1984 paranormal comedy classic Ghostbusters, and we are putting it on stage live as if it were written by William Shakespeare himself. Uh, we here at the Ghostlight League, that's my uh, 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 like independent theatre company that I've um, run, been running the last couple of years, like to blend pop culture and theater and nerdy stuff and put it all on stage and we did Shakespeare Aliens quite successfully for about a year and a half and now we're moving on to part two this script's written by the Coincidence Man a brilliant comedy group from uh, and sketch and impro group from Toronto and uh, they are letting us use their script for a fee, of course, you know it's yeah, it's it's a capital, capitalistic world that we live in. Um, but it's a lot of fun, a lot of a uh, lot of jokes, a lot of hijinks, a lot of awesome puppets by the incredible Donna Prince, and uh, a lot of our cast from uh, Shakespeare Aliens are coming back. So opens Halloween at the Motley Bauhaus uh, in Carlton, and uh, we're putting on about uh, six shows. Yeah, come along, Lincoln. Look at the episode. I'm there every night. Come, come say hi. Also at Motley Bow House in like uh, two, 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 three weeks is Time Lord. We're bringing that back. Improvised Doctor Who for the 60th anniversary. Um, 60th anniversary coming up. Save the shilling for the end. Yeah, we'll sa- yeah, we'll save that for the end when you've got another. If you've got Escape from Witch Mountain or yeah. another <laughs> obscure Disney telefilm. Anyway, Zach, absent-minded professor, what did you think of this? You haven't seen this before, have you? No, I hadn't seen this before. This is great. Well, this is a great movie. I had a great time. What are you guys? <laughs> you guys are talking about this is a, a fun, goofy professor man. Ha ha! He invent thing that defies physics. Nobody dies in this world because it's a Disney film. And I'm like, this is the most dangerous thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> it's literally like an infinite energy machine, right? Like, it starts producing more energy. How do they stop it? Why does no one concerned about death? They doomed that Baron to jump there for eternity. Like, that one false step and he's face planting into the concrete. <laughs> like, like what? what is going on in this movie? Uh, no, but I had a great time. I thought it was, I thought it was cute. I thought it was fun. <laughs> Cool. Yeah. Glad you. Glad, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen Flubber though? You have seen Flubber, right? No. Oh, I have okay. never seen Flubber. <laughs> you know, which is funny because I really like Robbie Williams. He's he's yeah. one of my favorites, and I've seen like most of his stuff. And then I realized, oh yeah, but I've never seen Flubber. I was thinking of watching it before this, but then I thought, nah, that would that would ruin my authentic experience, you know, of enjoying this film. Taint it with, with modern technology. No, I want to watch this. And and you know what? I liked the effects in this film. That's definitely uh, one of the big pluses of this film was the effects. So it was like, when people are jumping up and down, I can barely see any wires. You know, it's it's cool. 
Yeah, I haven't seen Flubber either. For some reason, my parents just decided to show me this one instead of oh, the nice. Robin Williams one. So I, have, I actually haven't even seen the remake. But yeah, uh, I don't know why. I have seen this before. I thought it was kind of fine, I guess. What, what, what do you think, Rob? <laughs> have you seen this before? Um, uh, yeah, I have seen it before. And it's interesting because... Well, for me, it's interesting. I don't know if anyone else finds it interesting. But because it's made around that same time within the Disney company, a lot of the same actors were used. So I grew up uh, watching The Wonderful World of Disney, which was on every Sunday night when I was a kid. And they'd have, you know, these type of movies put on every Sunday, part one, one week, part two, the other week. So um, so The Shaggy Dog, which is another one uh, from the uh, two years before with Fred McMurray's in that, uh, and the kid who played, um, uh, uh, so like who was on the, who was on the, the basketball team but couldn't play he played the son of uh fred mcmurray in the shaggy dog he was the lead character will be daniels um and a lot of the support cast so it's got like uh ed win who was uh uncle albert in mary poppins he has a small role um uh, uh one of the other characters from the shaggy dog oh shaggy da is in there so for me it was quite um comforting to watch this film and go oh i know that actor i grew up watching him on that thing and oh i know that so um so it, I mean, it's so a homogenized representation of this, you know, uh, American myth. Uh, it is so 1950s in 1961, um, where nobody dies, uh, everyone's white. Um, yep. even though it's about basketball. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> it's very funny. Mm. Women are concerned, women are concerned with their hair when they arrive at the White House. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's the, the charm for me is when the two of them are together. So when um, the the couple in the car going around having these pleasant little little America tr- trips around in their flying car yeah. for me is quite in, is quite endearing. They're just they go, oh good heavens, oh what's going on? I know they sound British in my voice, but you know going, you know this is happening over here and this is over there. That was quite endearing. But there's no story. It's just like a <laughs> section of stuff that happens. <laughs> There is no story. You are correct. <laughs> like, like the mo- like the basket, the big basketball game. That would be like the end of the film, isn't it? But it's sort of like it's like fifteen minutes in. Aren't they going? Well, this movie's going to finish. Oh shit, we've still got like fifty minutes to go. So, and then like the dance is there, but the dance doesn't really happening. And then he just flies around and then flies back. And then flies- <laughs> and so it's it yeah it's 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 very aimless for me. Uh, but uh, but Fred McMurray's charming, and and a lot of the actors are charming as well. Um, but yes, it's not one I will race back to watch again. So I thank you so much, Sandro, for giving me this opportunity. <laughs> I think. Uh- I think you're really missing the point. You see, the the film's absentness is to represent the scientist absent-mindedness. Oh, yeah, it's actually, it's, it's, actually su- it's actually super deep and intellectual. <laughs> this, this film about a man who sticks infinite power gel to his shoes so he can bounce around like a rabbit. Irons them onto his shoes. Oh, yeah, irons them on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I think... You can tell that this is based off a short story because it doesn't, it, it kind of goes somewhere and then it stops and meanders for a bit. And then it's like, actually, we're about this now. We'll get into like some more spoilers later. But yeah, it did just kind of, it was just on for an hour and a half. Like, that's just kind of <laughs> how I feel about this movie. It was just on. I don't know. Wow. Like not in a bad way. Well, because, like, I had seen this before, so the whole time I was, like, nostalgic for it, but not in a, I remember enjoying this way, in a, (laughs) oh, yeah, I've seen this before. (laughs) Like, just kind of, like, confirming the fact that I had seen it before. That's what the nostalgia was. I don't know. There's some, there's some cute, there's some cute little gags in there, like, especially when they get to Washington and the guys there going, we're going to shoot them down. And it goes, but they're just above, you know, the Capitol building. And it goes, counting down, it goes... And as they're in session, and if you do it, every single politician will be blown up. And then he keeps on doing the countdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he has that moment where he goes, "Yes, I'll keep on doing this." And the cute little and the gag of sort of like the Air Force, Navy, and Army kind of like 
like school petulant school kids sort of like working against each other, um, but always arriving at the same spot was quite cute. Yeah, um, yeah, that was really funny. They all had the same idea to try and get ahead of one another. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's cute little setups there, like the um, like at the end at the press conference, the the guy who runs everything. Every time they asked a question to Fred McMurray, he always answered it. Um, that um, so got, you know, classic comedy setup stuff was was is there it's ingrained in the system it's just you get to the end of it and you go what happened like it went for it went for nearly yeah it went for an hour and 40 minutes but what happened yeah well you know it makes sense that this has some pretty good jokes in it it makes sense that there's some great visual effects because yeah the creative team behind this is great so it's Written by Bill Walsh, directed by Robert Stevenson. Um, Bill Walsh also wrote Shaggy Dog. Uh, he also wrote Love Bug, the original Herbie film. Um, but the the two of them are probably best known for both writing and directing Mary Poppins. Yeah. So like, hey. yeah, it's a it's a pretty good team, and yeah, like the visuals here are really good. There's some great effects. There's some that are a bit. A little bit jank, but most of them, in particular, the flying car, just look fantastic. There's parts mm. where, like, they're driving on, like, the walls of, like, an alleyway. It's just, it's great. It's so much fun. That was really good when they were escaping, and it, like, curves and is riding on the side of a building. That was amazing. And it was quite in, quite endearing, and how it added to the, sort of, like, that mythical version of America being shot in black and white, because this was done in 61, so um, colour is the way to go. But um, but this and Shaggy Dog were sort of like the only two films after colour was introduced that Disney shot on black and white. And then they did this stupid thing in, um, I think it was, yeah, the 80s when they did this whole, let's colourise movies. Let's yes. colourise black and white films. Let's see if we can make that interesting. And so they did that with The Shaggy Dog. They did that with um, Flubber. Uh, oh, sorry, with um, with Absent Minded Professor. And it just worked so much better in black and white. And coming from someone who just last night watched Werewolf by Night for the first time, uh, and now they've just released a colour version of Werewolf by Night, I'm going, what's the freaking point? Have you not watched the whole thing? It's meant to... Anyway, um, so... Wait, are you saying Disney are pumping out remakes of their old films that add nothing of value whatsoever? And that's... But well, that's the thing. It's not even a, not even a remake. It, they're yeah, re-releasing yeah. the exact same thing, and they're taking away the one thing that actually was one of the many things are you, of... Are you talking about the live actions right now? <laughs> or are you talking about... <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, you can just say Disney remake, and you just cover everything everything because those add nothing of value in it as well no, so, yeah. no they don't they, add, <laughs> they do add value to uh disney's coffers and you know what that's all that's all they really care about and that we could all agree on that's a positive at least you know so, solid, <laughs> so, solidarity to the actors on strike at the moment yeah <laughs> yes but yeah um i don't know is, is there anything else non-spoilery that you want to say about this movie Zach? <laughs> Nope. Everything I have is to question the reality that I'm in. So, <laughs> well, look. Okay, I I highly recommend because I was talking about what other films that I've seen these actors in. I highly recommend Blackbeard's Ghost. Mm. That's a really good one. I recommend um, uh, A Tiger Walks. That's a really good one. Um, I recommend uh, the the Shaggy uh, Dog and its sequel, The Shaggy DA, made in the seventies. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of other great uh, Disney films around this time, live action, which has that element of um, uh, oh, and the Cat from Outer Space. That is Ooh. my favorite. The Cat from Outer Space. Yeah, you heard me, Cat Outer and Zach. You heard that last word, space. Already Googling it. <laughs> <laughs> Adding it to the list. Oh, hell yeah. Look at this boy. He's from out of space. His collar glows. That's how you can tell. So the cat from out of space has got Sandy Duncan, who went on to do the Hogan family. Brilliant. It's got the lead guy from F Troop. Brilliant. It's got McLean Stevenson from MASH. And it's got uh, uh, Colonel Potter as well. So it's got both colonels from uh, MASH in it, McLean Stevens and Harry Morgan. And it's got my favorite actor of all time, Roddy McDowell. So mm. um, you're welcome, people. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about the absent-minded professor, but I'm spooking the cat from outer space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.
It seems like as well, um, a lot of the, the, the cast who were still alive in the 90s actually showed up as background roles in Flubber as well, which is pretty cool. That is the remake if you, if you don't, I don't know if that film is even well remembered. I don't know, but it's a, it's the remake from the 90s. It, it focuses more on the basketball stuff. Mm, mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's got Marsha Gay Harden, Oscar winning Marsha Gay Harden playing the love interest for Robin Williams, which is very interesting, so. Yeah, I have not seen Flubber. <laughs> de- de- oh, wait. So all three of us, I think I've, I've seen it, but as a child. So I don't remember it at all. So I can't say that I remember it. Um, it's uh, it's fun. There's a few differences between the two movies from what I've seen. I like how, yeah, in Absent Minded Professor, he's got like a maid um, that tells him stuff in Flubber. He's got an Apple Watch. He's got, he's got an Apple Watch with internalized misogyny. Nice. That doesn't uh. want him to get married. <laughs> oh, no. That's an app. That's an app you have to add on to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And there is also the actual sequel to this as well called Son of Flubber, which I've never seen. I, I'm, I'm never, I'll <laughs> never watch it. What? What? Why is it called Son of Flubber? What? I don't, I don't know. I get Son of Kong, right? Son of Kong makes sense because it's about the son of Kong. Does the flubber give birth in that film? I refuse to look it up. I think they just have a son. I don't know. Okay. Uh, uh, Fred McMurray reprises his role from the previous film, a scientist who has perfected high boun- high bouncing substance. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's what they call it, high bounce. So, uh, Professor Brennan's discovery of Flubber has not quite brought him or his college the riches he thought. The Pentagon has declared his discovery top secret, and the IRS has slapped him with huge tax bills, <laughs> even though he has yet to receive any money from his invention. Uh, mm. The sounding a bit too realistic. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's being screwed by the system. Doesn't that sound fantastic? Wow. wow. He invents Flubber gas, which can change the weather? Okay. <laughs> cool. I'm going to go with my canon that the flubber gives birth and has a baby. That's my, that's my canon. Smart move. There we go. Anyway, Zach, you, you can give this an oldie or a goodie. I'm going to give it a goodie because of our binary rating system where we have to choose either good or bad. And so I'm going to give this a goodie. Uh, which uh, puts it up with the upper echelons of all our other movies. But you know what? It was funny to watch the man bounce around. Ha <laughs> ha. That's 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 true. Basketball. How about how about you, Rob? All the for this one. Well, look. Um, despite the fact it does have the tagline on the movie poster, the funniest discovery since laughter. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. Oh wow, that is a bold claim. <laughs> I know, and there there are so many wonderful cast in here from uh, other great Disney films from my childhood and past, like that, and some iconic images of the flying car and stuff like that. Sorry, I'm going to have to give it an oldie. Ah, so you hated this film and it was the worst film you've ever watched ever? Oh my god. That's right, because it's it's a binary system of uh, politics, it's a binary system of uh, moral belief, so you either love something or you hate it. As George W. Bush once said, either you're with us or against us. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's it. That's that's what we're doing with our rating system. We're getting rid of this middle ground bullcrap that people <laughs> do with their movies. You know, you're either with it or against it. Damn right, because that's it. that that works out so well in politics and the rest of the world. So let's try. That's true. Why not try it here. We're doing it here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Sandro, are you with us or against us? Yes, yeah. oh, man. <laughs> I'm gonna give this an oldie and a good no. Um, <laughs> Whoa, no. <laughs> I don't know. I I just I don't. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, so I guess it's an oldie. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. I used to have this on DVD, and I watched it once. So. Mm, 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 mm. On DVD? On DVD. I, I think my uh, grandparents probably bought a Disney collection for us or something. I don't know. Sandro's absent-minded. He'll like this film. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Waha there, it's me, Spooky McPooper, formerly known as Selly McSeller. I'm an American, and the boys at Oldie But A Goodie have told me that there's a brand new bonus episode for your ear holes this Halloween. Head over to patreon.com forward slash Oldie But A Goodie pod where you can get the long-awaited episode on Troll 2. It's the worst, best horror film of all time. It's the best, worst horror film of all time. I don't know which one's correct, but either way, he's a clip. We got Short King, Glasses King. (laughs) 
<laughs> running off into the forest, going into the witch's house. Oh, he's following a lady. She gets eaten. And he says, they're eating her. Then they're going to eat me. Oh, my God. Which is the scene. It happens so early. The scene happens so early in the movie. You know what's the saddest thing? Mm. That's some of the best acting in this film. <laughs> he's really good, isn't he? He's probably the best. Yeah. He's like one of the better actors. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I, I would I would absolutely say this. But like going into the movie, I thought that was going to be like the worst acting in the film. Oh, no. Was like that scene. No, no. Oh, absolutely not. Oh, my God. That sounds hilarious and scary. And you can listen to that now at patreon.com forward slash oldie but a goodie pod where you can get so many bonus episodes, including the first troll movie and that one. You can also get ad-free episodes of the main show for only a dollar. Wow, I love being an American who makes podcast ads. It's my dream job. There is some cute stuff in there. It is just very dated and I, yeah, that, uh, um, yeah, the, the fiance, uh, has to move from, uh, yeah, wanting to be married and then moves on to another guy straight away and then leaves him and goes back to the absent minded professor. I'm going, oh, come on, girl, get out of this abusive structure of life. Come on. Well, here's the thing, right? And we're, we're jumping into it already, but like, Three missed marriages? Three? Three? Yeah, the whole plot of the movie is that he's missed he's missed three weddings. Three? Which is a lot. And I mean, look, this guy very like hyper fixated on everything. Um he he really is the original Sheldon in many ways. Uh, <laughs> Bazinga. <laughs> Bazinga, but uh yeah, like I, I don't, I don't know. Just not like okay. That's how you're gonna introduce your main character. I find it so funny how in the '60s they were like, "This guy is kind of a dick." He's the main character, like him. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, we've all missed a few marriages before. You know, it's all happened. Where it's like, oh, it's past eight thirty. Whoops, I missed my marriage again. Gah. <laughs> hey, uh. And the other guy reads books, so he's an idiot. Ah, what a dummy. He's a what a dick. D- he quotes Shakespeare. Ooh. Oh, can you imagine liking someone who likes Shakespeare? Oh, yeah. Oh, gross. Yeah. I could never. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can edit that part out. Can't you? <laughs> you can, uh, I mean, he is a bit slammy, but it is the Shakespeare thing. But that's, the big, that's the big problem yeah. with that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's all the Shakespeare stuff. You know? <laughs> he wears a hat inside. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. It's not even church. Can you imagine a guy who wears hats indoors and likes Shakespeare? Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> he misses, like, three weddings. And it's just, I'm just, like, it's one of those movies where it's, like, you start it off and you've got your two leads... And you know that at the end of the movie, they're going to be in love. But you start off, and they're, like, already meant to be in love, but they're not. (laughs) You know what I mean? Well, yeah, yeah, because she's upset with him, uh, as she should be, because he's missed the bloody three weddings. Yeah. I don't know how she gets back together with him, to be (laughs) honest. I I was kind of rooting for the other couple. He seemed like he was actually interested, at least. I liked I liked the old lady is like, you know, if you don't chase after her, she's gotta settle, you know. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, no, that seems fair. But seriously, he could have just done his, you know, scientific discovery of the century the next day. You know what I mean? Like just just wait five minutes, my guy. Go get go get married real quick. Come back. Invent flubber. Everyone's happy. <laughs> but no, of course, he is the absent-minded professor. So he does his calculations and he uh, bubbles up some beakers and other things. Oh, there's the great intro with the uh, trumpet as well. Um, I thought that was quite good. That was pretty fun. We jump right into it and actually see him being a professor for the only point in the movie where we see him <laughs> yeah. teaching. Well, yeah, he gives a lesson on, like, um, like how a trumpet can break glass and stuff, which is pretty fun. Yeah, yeah, reverberating with sound. But, of course, he has the glass in front of him, and he's blowing the trumpet, and it's breaking every glass object around him except <laughs> the, uh, the glass that he's trying to break, which was quite good. Yeah, it's more like an opening sketch, because it does that, and then it shows, you know, has the fanfare and the overture and the um, the credits go, oh. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's very much that... It's 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 a quaint type of feel. It's a sort of like an old fashioned 
um, you know, nostalgic way of, of of setting up a film with just like a little sketch at the start and then little vignettes as you go along. Yeah, I think it was a good way to start the movie because you you get an idea. He's a he's a professor. He's a bit absent-minded. Ha ha! It's a silly kids film. All right, play the title. Boom. I do have a bunch of notes from the start of the movie, just kind of getting into the groove of, of it. Like my favorite note being, uh, "This is the most." Doctor Who sounding movie I've ever watched because <laughs> when I say that there are 1960s sci-fi sound effects in this one, there are <laughs> so many. And if you have seen any episode of, of of classic Doctor Who, you would probably recognize most of them because it's the same sound effects that they were using in that show at the time too. It's so like it's just I don't know. I like it. I like the sound. It's very fun. Um, the whole time he's like making flubber as well. He's like yelling talking quite passionately to his dog he's like we're doing this we're doing this we're doing this it sounds like rick he's like morty we're making we're making this thing and i just mm. as soon as i thought that i couldn't get that that out of my head <laughs> oh, i nice. laughed every time he was talking to the dog but but i think i think it's the same dog as shaggy dog i think it might be the same dog it's the same sort of breed i guess i don't know I think I think it's a smaller dog in Absent Minded Professor because the Shaggy dog is like a big, big type of um, yeah uh, dog that can drive a car. Well, this one just does a uh, you know passenger work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the 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 sound effect of the Model T, like that bubbly type sound of uh, with the flubber in it, is very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. And the gag when they the the gag of uh, the prank when they swap the Model Ts and they open up and there is literally. Uh, a squirrel on a hamster wheel. <laughs> yes. No, no CGI there or anything. They actually put a, a squirrel in a hamster wheel and put it in a Model T Ford and made it run and then filmed it. They filmed that. That's 1961. That's very good. There are a bunch of like really, really good jokes in this movie, and that was a that was a good one. So yeah, really classic setup stuff. Like all three of the. All three of the heads of defense standing there and going, oh, well, we're all the same. There's nothing different about us at all. We don't need to be competitive at all. They find out about this anti-gravity thing and the guy doesn't like it. And they just immediately go, oh, we're not interested in that. What a crackpot. Press the button, press the button, press the button. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, very cute. I'm going to go with my uh, fan theory here, by the way. Oh, no. I just want to throw good. this out to you guys. You know, what are your thoughts? Um, when he invents Flubber, the, mm. the instant that is made... Um, I believe he killed death by accident. <laughs> I believe he broke the universe so much that death is no longer present uh, because a huge explosion goes off, but he's perfectly fine and unharmed from this incident. He does use gamma radio, like he just uses isotopes yeah, in his garage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he should be getting radiation poisoning. He should have died in an explosion. No protection but gloves. I think what powers Flubber, because Flubber has some sort of infinite energy thing. I think what energy it's using is the entity known as death. He has trapped it, it the eldritch being, in this gooeyest form, and that is how it works. Because throughout the film, even more dangerous scenarios happen, yeah. and nothing comes of it. So I'm pretty sure everyone's immortal and they don't know it yet. Um, and I'll I'll lead on to that in our uh, in our uh, sequel. I think maybe they follow that up in Son of Flubber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they expand on that. Son of Flubber, Professor Brainerd's back, and also's death to pay back. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that would be a more interesting plot than what we get here, which is like, <laughs> the, the, col the college is going is going to be shut down. And they need money, and they're going to use the invention. But there's a bad guy, mm. and he wants the money. And that's the plot of the movie. <laughs> and he's got a... Sh he's like a shady deal, like he's a mob boss? Or mm. is he? Is he with the mob? Is he not? Well, he's both part of the mob and a uh, businessman um, at the same time. Uh, because they are, they are capitalism slash money, which is bad. Yes. Yes. So you know he's the bad guy. Yes, because they don't really push the the university as losing money stuff. That's like really early on, and mm. then it. I don't really feel it's brought back because they're focusing too much on basketball and dancers and yeah and 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 squirrels in hamster wheels. 
But the effect of like flubber and stuff, they use it a bunch. The flying car, we've already talked about that's pretty good, but they do put, um, they iron it onto some shoes and then go bouncing around. We get that long basketball scene that goes on for way too long. Um, <laughs> where they're playing basketball. I don't really know how they shot it. I feel like maybe it was on trampolines. I'm not entirely sure. Cause it's not. That's true. It's too, cause they're landing with straight legs they're not bending when they land so i'm like maybe they were just bouncing on trampolines it could be wires but it doesn't look right for wires i don't know well that's the thing a lot of the um wires and stuff have been taken out digitally in other disney films for them to upload on uh streaming platforms so like the black hole black hole which is incredible and amazing and whatever people say about it it's not true it's a masterpiece (laughs) um (laughs) um, there's like a lot of uh, any gravity stuff at the start and in the original dvds and stuff you can see all the wires as they're doing it but they've taken them all out in um the the streaming service version so i'm not sure whether they've cgi'd out the wires that were possibly more clearer in original releases or not? I'm not sure. I mean, in theory, it could be both. Uh, You know, you get wires and trampolines, and that way you get a more authentic jumping action with your characters, and then you can float them down. Yeah. Gives them an effect. Yeah. Although... We, we see in this one, though, people who don't know how to use Flubber bouncing around. Also, the professor potentially dooms a basketball team to horrible deaths. Um, but luckily, uh, as it so happened, death isn't real anymore. So no accidents occur while these basketball players aren't told. He, he, puts, he puts the Flubber on their souls and is like, go get them, champs. It just doesn't tell them. And they know how to master it very quickly. Yeah, yeah, they're not, yeah. They're not good at basketball, but they can master a, something that defies gravity and chemistry and any logic um, straight away. Absolutely. That, that's some skilled basketball players there. It just it, it just it just goes on for too long, though. Like, we see every single shot that they get to overtake the team that they're playing <laughs> against. Like, every shot. I'm like... Just make a montage. Oh, man, Mm. where's Rocky? We need Rocky (laughs) to invent the montage so so we can just have a quick basketball scene. And I have to say this now before I explode. There is no rule that says you can't stick flubber on your shoes and play basketball. (laughs) Or or iron it onto the bottom of a dog. Yeah, yeah, iron. Sorry, yes. Very key that you iron it. I love the I love those old school basketball courts, and I think it, so. Like the tail end of it in eighties in uh, Teen Wolf, but it's a smallish types um, basketball uh, a gymnasium, and it's packed. So it is packed to the brim with extras and crowds, and it just feels so lived in. Most you know basketball courts and stuff you see in film nowadays are big and spacious and there's too much room and and but with these old type of things everyone's just crammed in there i mean sure it's a fire hazard but um it looks amazing the energy and the vibe you just feel it absorb out of the screen and hit you in the face it's it's it, it, i love that energy of how they used to shoot for real in these smaller type um sets and stuff like that like at the dance as well it's just, it's in the sort of like the same gym and it's just packed to the rafters with all these people well don't worry death isn't real so fire has it doesn't matter you know it's <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, i also love the the sort of tro- the trope of uh well, the rules don't say anything against it, so <laughs> let them do it, I say. Yeah, what's the problem? Uh, I love that. I love that. Because it, it, it kind of works in real life as well. There's a lot of real sports things where that actually happened. Um, there's a famous footballer um, that, like, put glue on his hands. Like, coated his hands in really sticky glue. Um, for every match, and he had like an insanely good goalkeeping record or whatever it was. <laughs> After they banned that, uh, he stopped playing because he was like, "Oh, he he fully admitted uh, he was really shit at the game." <laughs> but, <laughs> but but because there was no rule against like coating your hands and sticking, and that's uh, I find that hilarious. You know that you you could once have done this sort of thing. So it's not super unrealistic to say if you're going into a game and you uh 
flubber it up, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they would be like, well, this game counts, but you're not doing it again. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Which is why I, I, I just, yeah, it's so, it, it's so weird still, though, that this is just like the middle point of the movie, that the actual plot is about swapping out the cars and stuff, because like, it just happens in the in the middle of the film, but it feels like the ending of the film. It's it's an odd one, but yeah, no, it's fun. It's fun. There's another fun point where so there's Professor Ashton, I think, who is the other professor who is trying to court Betsy. The the absent minded professor sees them talking, uh, and then follows Ashton home. There's a great joke where Ashton is leaving her house kind of drives past the frame and then we see the two headlights <laughs> from the absent minded p- professor's car just turn on <laughs> <laughs> very threatening for like a solid three seconds and this is the hero this is the hero <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah this is the guy we're rooting for comes across as yeah a stalkery um uh, type character yeah. yeah yeah and then it's just um him flying and bouncing on the roof of this guy's car yeah. for like five minutes he, he really uh, does just harass this man, and he does it again later, and I feel like it's it's like Plato's, ha-ha, the bad guy's getting their comeuppance, but if you think about it, <laughs> if you think about it a little too much, which I love to do, that that's horrifying, you know? Yeah. You've got this giant metal machine that's powered by this, you know, super entity goo thing that's slamming into you going, awooga, you know? <laughs> it is indeed saying, awooga. Awooga, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what, every every time he honks the horn, that's all I can think of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, like, he, like, does this so much that he distracts the guy so that he rams headfirst into a cop car, which then happens at the end of the movie as well. They do that to a bunch of goons, and it's just the same shot of the car ramming into the police car. He causes a horrible car accident, but luckily death isn't real anymore, so everyone's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to see what else is in this movie that we can talk, talk about. There is the dance scene, which I think mm-hmm. they do in Flubber as well. I think I've seen that clip out of context. There's like a dance scene in that one. In this one, he's just kind of like dancing with her, but then jumping up and down. He's not like using the Flubber to dance in the sky or whatever she's just kind of bouncing around (laughs) it's just bouncing around remember the good old days where groups of high school kids would just break into song as well i mean i miss those days i miss those days when entire people an entire group of people just broke into you know the flying trapeze man song what a wonderful (laughs) what a wonderful thing we don't have in society nowadays yeah, where I miss the days where in school they would teach you to choreograph and other things just in case, you know, any <laughs> jumping man to. comes in, they'd teach you songs for every scenario <laughs> yeah. just in case, you know, yeah. Now it's all changed to, you know, uh, there's a gunman in your school drills. Ooh, is that Ooh. too dark? Is that too dark? That's too uh, dark. I'll figure it out when I'm editing. <laughs> uh, death, death isn't real, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know? no, that's true, though. But there is a really dark joke in this movie where um, he's showing off the bouncing shoes and he's like, imagine you're in a burning house. You're like, oh, I'm going to die in this house. And then you walk over to the window. You're like, oh, life isn't worth it anymore. And then you jump. But you got bouncing shoes, so you just kind of bounce around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually jumps off the balcony, and of course the um, the Baron's like, "Oh, what the heck!" And then of course he he just bounces back up. But again, one misplaced step, you know, one slip, and you know they're landing head first. That's that ain't good. Exactly. You don't. No matter how many gridiron teams you bring down to crash tackle you. Yeah, yeah, well, that's it, that's it. And, like, they leave him bouncing there, just bouncing there. D- they're leaving him to die. These are the heroes. Yeah. These are the people we're meant to be rooting for. Yeah. I don't like these I don't like these people. I was like, wait, they just leave him there? Although it is very funny how just, like, ridiculous, like, the whole town comes out to watch this guy just bounce around. They're serving popcorn. They're serving sausages. It's like, wow, they... And, and and it's even worse because there's like kids around. So now when this man slips and like it lands <laughs> head first, it's gonna the whole town's gonna see it, you know? It did remind me of um one of my favorite films from the eighties, uh The Burbs, with uh by by Joe Dante with uh uh Tom Hanks and so it's about, you know, 
uh, people in the neighborhood, in the burbs, getting paranoid of new visitors and stuff like that. And there's a character played by Corey Feldman, Ricky Butler, who watches everything that plays out. And like, it, that's, he says, you don't need to go to the movies or a concert. This is my neighborhood. This is, so the moment where, um, you know, the, the guy jumping up and down, his son just like rings up his girlfriends to come around and <laughs> now, him with two girls are there eating hot dogs and watching his dad bounce up and down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is really funny because I think that actually kind of ties around to him being that dude's son because he's he's calling up people. He's manipulating his dad for his own gain. So it's actually like what his dad was doing. And I'm like, hey, that's actually kind of neat. And his dad treats him like shit. So of course he's not going to, you know, he's going to take his time to figure out a way of going, oh, I'll call the football team. He He's enterprising just like his dad, which I thought was, which I thought was like, oh, wait a minute. That's actually kind of clever. Hold <laughs> up. Was this intentional? I'm not sure. But yeah, it's good. I, I, I like the, the dad's son because he's like, somewhat good because he's rooting for the school itself but he's also a terrible student yeah he like fate like he can't play on the basketball team because he failed an exam or something i don't know what was going on there <laughs> i think he's relatable you know I, I miss characters being called like this so the kid's name was biff yeah ah biff yeah we gotta get more biffs as the antagonists you know biff hawk and his dad name was alonzo mm. <laughs> So if you didn't think he was in the mafia, you do know now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What else is in this movie? Uh, they have to get the car back. We kind of talked about that already. It, like drives on walls and stuff. A pretty good car chase there. That was really fun. But but he has to uh, fight quotation marks the the guards of the car after accidentally stepping in a harp, <laughs> which is a a. <laughs> five ten minute scene of him stepped into a harp and there now they have to carefully remove his shoe otherwise his flubber is gonna bounce him through the harp meanwhile one one of the the mobsters in the background's like do you hear a harp and he's like well you're starting to hear things now mm, you know and they and, he, and they repeat the same way so it's so like um, they run towards him. He jumps using Flubber and barges into the <laughs> door. Then they move around a bit. Then they do the exact same gag. It's the same footage again. Like uh, the- Yeah, yeah, which is dumb. But, of course, they learn from it, and they're like, oh, we'll go high this time. And, of course, the professor goes low. <laughs> That's right. I, I enjoyed the car chase, though. I liked how they just, like, randomly had guns. I was like, okay, <laughs> there we go. They're shooting at the professor now. It escalates very quickly. We go from guns, then we go to missiles, then we go to machine guns. It's, yeah, it's... The absent-minded professor, I'm just saying, he's not worried at all. He Like, the mobsters pull a gun on him, he's cool, he's chill. He's like, ah, oh, look at them shooting at us. <laughs> <laughs> he really is just, yeah, just fine with everything. It's very Yeah, funny. and I was like, oh my god, they are shooting at you. One straight bullet, and it's over, champ. Get out of there. Crank that flubber up to 11. Get get the heck out of there. <laughs> but yeah, then he takes his car, he flies to Washington, and we just get US propaganda. They're flying around <laughs> and they're like, it makes you feel proud of the country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look Washington. at this monument over here. <laughs> look at this one. Washington's a great city. There's something for everyone here. <laughs> just mm. stop it. <laughs> Quite recently, I just rewatched the original uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and I forgot how it's incredible film ratcheting up this tension of um, like who's who's an alien, who's a pod person, who's real, and stuff like that. And it gets to the ending, and it's sort of like everyone's a pod person. There's no freedom at all. And the lead character goes to another town and confesses everything, and they don't believe him until they find a pod. And and the final thirty seconds is we have to ring the government. They'll know what to do. <laughs> mm. And everyone goes, ah, the fifties and sixties where everyone believed the government were going to help you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And in this film as well, they go, the government is great. We are all powerful, and we will help any situation. Yes. I mean, ignore that bit where we pointed missiles at a, t- a model T <laughs> for it, but you know, <laughs> and so much so that one yeah. of the, one of the military guys is actually tempted to fire the missiles and blow up all the politicians there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. was very funny. I uh, that, that. that was the most relatable bit, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. 
But then, yeah, they uh, they get the money and then and the, gov- the, the government are happy and stuff. And that's and that's the, the movie. They get married. Except if you look into the, the second film and apparently they don't get the money. Yes. And they're not happy. But, but ignore that bit because, yeah, I, I did like the cutaway. It was very similar at the very end there to um, another film we recently watched, um, the spy film. Oh, North by Northwest. Yes. Yeah, yes, North yes. by Northwest, where it had like, a a zoom in cutaway um but this one made a lot more sense in this film it like finished really well where they've got a reporter who's asking him questions and it's like do you intend to uh keep doing science and blah 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 and he says i do but then it zooms out and he's in a wedding and he's like i do to finally get married and it was like ah yeah that's a that's a good that's a good finish to this film i thought that was that was good yeah no definitely but, but but that's the that's the whole movie. That's the, that's the whole <laughs> film. That's the film. That's Absent Minded Professor. Um, how does it work? How does this work? Like you throw it on the ground and it starts bouncing, right? And it gains more and more energy. How do you stop that? Um, well, Fred, uh, well, Fred McMurray definitely showed that um, when he put it on his shoes. Uh, it went everywhere, and then he just he just stopped it. Oh, so how do how do how, how do you stop it, Zach? You stop it. You stop ah, it. Ah, I didn't think of that one. I just thought of the implications of an object that gains more energy than it loses and how that would break <laughs> the universe and destroy everything. Oh, oh foolish, <laughs> foolish, small-minded Zach. Ah. See, when you need to stop Flubber, you stop it. Oh, I see, I see, I see. But when it's, like, convenient for the bad guy to keep bouncing, then you don't stop it. Ah, uh, he didn't He didn't stop it, Zach. He didn't, he didn't stop it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, he was like me, the bad guy, you know, Ab- <laughs> didn't, didn't figure it out. Just, just stop it, lol. It is odd as well how, like, if you keep gaining momentum with Flubber on your shoes, how durable do the shoes need to be? Mm, like, surely yeah. at some point, how, like, it's only on... The heel too. They only ironed it onto the heel. So like, if you land on the ball of your feet and not the heel, do you just collapse? Like, what? Yeah, what yeah, is- that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Your your foot falls over. You just collapse on the ground. Yeah. What a great question, Sandro. What we do here is go back, 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 back. And we're back. And we're back with another episode of the wait, Bros- wait, 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 James, James. They might not know who we are yet. Oh right, this is a promo. Well, I'm James. And I'm Matt. And together, we're the Bros and Brews Podcast. We're coming at you every week with worldly discussions, an art meets life questions podcast. What three albums would you take to a deserted island? How comfortable are you with sex and sexuality? Is it ethical to have children? What actually makes a great actor? We use our personal experiences, the craft of acting, and pop culture as a springboard to discuss everything. From uncomfortable truths, demonized issues, and problems often swept under the rug. But don't worry, we have fun along the way. Come join us for our weekly chicken, and we'll see you next time. Peace! Anyway, I think we should move on to the remake. We're going to remake this film, because there is a remake called Flubber, but we need another one. And I think this one should have Eddie Murphy in the role, and he's just a bit nutty. <laughs> it's a nutty Eddie Murphy performance. And we and we see his family, and, 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 and we see him play all the family members. And, uh, uh, uh. Uh, that's references. You kids don't get that. <laughs> yeah, a remake of this... I guess it's more similar to the original, so we want we want more of that kind of borderline po- political satire that we kind of get in this with like the army and stuff, because that's not really in the Robin Williams one at all, from what I've seen. Um, Zach, if you were to remake this, if you were to recast the role of Professor Brainard, who would you pick? And don't pick Jim Parsons, who plays Sheldon. Don't pick that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good idea, though. And this this film could have used a few more bazingas, absolutely, <laughs> but. <laughs> Um, that that's my only criticism of the film. Nothing else. No, no criticisms otherwise. I've got, I've, I've got a good one. He's, yeah. Um, yeah. he's, he's done quite a lot of Disney work. Uh, Keegan Michael Key. Oh yeah, I can see Keegan Michael Key doing this. He's got like the high energy. Yeah, 
Yeah, he's got the high energy. He's you know he 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 got the yeah the, you know, the googly eyes. He's yeah, got the, yeah, yeah. He's got the stare and look. He can be he can be charming and 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 um, inoffensive and uh, a little bit wacky, but I, not. I, I I can't imagine him just holding the flubber with like wide eyes, like staring at it, like yeah. ooh, what is this? What have I created? Yeah, and his and his re- and his reaction to you know bump, jumping around and stuff like that, he'd be really like losing his mind. I think Keegan Michael Key would be wonderful. Uh, he would make a great absent-minded professor. Like, just <laughs> yeah, I like it. Yeah, he doesn't get to be the lead in a lot of stuff either. He's always kind of like a side, a side character. So I think that's a really fun idea. I was thinking Kate McKinnon. I was like, you know, Kate, Kate McKinnon, kind of like a Ghostbusters sort of twenty sixteen vibe. You know, that's like she's the best part of that movie. It's a good performance. But uh, yeah, I like. Keegan Michael Key, I think we definitely go with that. But, but that's a very good idea. Does that mean that Jordan Peele is directing this? No, that's not the that's not the right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Let's get Jordan Peele to direct a remake of Absent Minded Professor with Keegan Michael Key as the lead. Oh my gosh! Excellent. And then they can go into the 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 like the whole death scenario oh, that's would, happening. On they here. definitely I would. <laughs> I, I would like them to go into the implications of Flubber, <laughs> where, you know, he's like absent-minded for his, he's like, oh, look, I can put this on the bottom of my shoe, I can bounce around, and then the other character's like, what the fuck? <laughs> it, it, it makes infinite energy? You could, you could cure every problem in the world. How does that exist? Isn't that breaking the laws of it? And the absent-minded professor, oh, look, I'm bouncing around. Woohoo! Look, I'm going to make a flying car. Whoa. I think that would be fun. Does that mean that Jordan Peele then, he probably plays maybe the bad guy? Maybe yeah, yeah. Get them in as well. <laughs> he can play the bad guy. That would be very funny. He'll play Alonzo Hawk. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And then I'm thinking, if we're going along that line and we're getting like so, so some comedians in, uh, particularly from that circle of comedians, um, you know, all of those friends, we could then get Eric Andre to play Professor Ashton, the other the other professor is trying to court. Court Betsy could be funny. He doesn't really have the same vibe as the guy in the movie, but I think you know. I think he could, he could play. He could play that role pretty well. He would definitely bring a new vibe to it. That's for sure. But who do we want as the the female oh. uh, lead? Uh, I go uh, Zazie Beats. Oh yeah, Zazie Beats is always Zazie is always Beats. fun. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that uh, that could absolutely work. Maybe they could also be like, what the heck is this flubber stuff? <laughs> you missed my wedding three times. I don't care about some stupid fucking infinite energy rubber that you've invented. That's true. Fuck off. That's true. I would like uh, my film to end with uh, the other couple getting together and the absent-minded professor n- not getting married. I feel like that ain't for him. Mm. Uh, is, is there another character you'd like to recast, Zach? we got one more that we can probably fit in. Is it James Corden as the dog? I think that's always a good idea. <laughs> no, no Sandra. Uh, we've seen enough of James Corden play animals in uh, Cats. We will, yeah, we've seen enough of James Corden, really. Full stop. Uh, I guess we could recast Biff, maybe. Could be funny. Oh, Biff. Um, well, Biff could be... <laughs> No, I'm not going to say that. No, we won't do that. Uh, if, they're, if they're going to have a president character, that would be Donald Glover. I was going to say Biff could be Donald Glover. Donald Glover is not going to play Biff. Donald Glover is not going to play Biff. Donald Glover is not going to play Biff, okay? If anything, he's the president. That would be amazing. I would I would like Donald Glover as the president. You know those uh, president shots where they shoot from behind, so you only see the back of their head? <laughs> um, and he's like the president, but it's just Donald Glover. That, that's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> Donald Glover is the president. <laughs> we'll put it in. Yeah, but we never see his face. Very specifically, we never see his face. <laughs> this is absolutely not the sort of movie that I think <laughs> I thought we were going to recast. It's a, it's a Key and Peele sketch film. Love absolutely. it. Absent Minded Professor. Well, there we go. I figured out, I figured out who could play Biff. Who oh, yeah. could play Biff could be oh, yeah. uh, Julian Dennison. Uh, the kid from, um, he, he's grown up now. Julian Dennison from Hunt from the World of People and Deadpool 2. Oh, and- yeah. I think we did, we put him in something recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, lo- I, I love the World of People, so uh, that makes sense. That checks out. He is fantastic. So there we go. All right, that is the episode right there. Thanks so much for joining us, Rob. 
Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me again so I could come on and watch an obscure film and then spruik my shit. Yeah, what's the shit? Go spruik it. What do you have to spruik? <laughs> come see Ghostbusters Shakespeare Ghostbusters at the Motley Bauhaus opening Halloween the 31st of October in Carlton at uh, 8pm. Uh, we're doing a matinee on Saturday the 4th of November at 3pm. Six shows only. And also our Time Lord, Improvised Adventures Through Time and Space with a uh, 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 famous uh, time-traveling alien from Gallifrey. Uh, we're doing three shows uh, in November to lead up to the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who on the 16th, 17th, and 18th of November, also at the Motley Bauhaus. Yeah, Time Lord's always fun. Come along, say hi, it's a fun time. And it's funny, I can personally endorse uh, the uh, uh, Doctor Who. As a show? You yeah, can yeah, endorse yeah. the TV show, not Doctor Who? But... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The entire TV show. I think that one's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, not only that, but I listened to uh, Subspace Radio the uh, other day. Um, so that was that, that, that was fun. Hey, you're, you're one of our five listeners. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it, was pretty, it was pretty great. Listen to me and Kevin Yang talk about Star Trek. Yeah, you talked about the Ferengi, which was which was pretty fun because they're uh, one of my favorites. Uh, Quark and Odo from Deep Space Nine, my favorite uh, buddy cop duo. There, <laughs> um, Rene, I could I could talk for hours about Rene Bourgeois and how much I love him. Just every time he would talk to Quark, he would cross his arms one <laughs> hand at a time very slowly and go, "No, Quark, we no, don't have Quark. That. Yeah, Odo, Odo, <laughs> help me, Odo." It's great. So uh, Bring You That was very nostalgic. And I started watching Deep Space Nine again. So that's your fault. The best. Um, that's completely your fault. The best Star Trek show in the history of the world. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's the most consistent. That makes it the best. Yeah. <laughs> I, I 100% agree. So yeah, tune into tune into Subspace Radio. Me and Kevin Yang talk about uh, uh, our Star Trek episodes every week, and we're almost at a, the end. We've got two more episodes of Lower Decks, mm. which are airing mm. at the moment, mm. and then up. after that, we've got a bit of a drought. We don't get Prodigy season two until next year on Netflix because finally the show's been saved. We don't get Discovery till early next year, so we've only got about a couple more episodes before we have a bit of a hiatus. It was it was interesting because I haven't seen Lower Decks. Oh, you'd love but it! But I I still listen I still listen to the uh, the podcast and it was still good it, even even not seeing the show. I like your show is uh, scheduled tangents, which is very clever um, because we don't schedule our tangents. We just have them. We just do it and then I cut them out when we're editing usually. <laughs> but it, it 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 makes a lot more sense to schedule them. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's very good. There's, uh, there's little links to everything in the episode description. Um, stuff for us to plug. We're on all the things. Please review us on your podcast apps because that means new people maybe check out the show. Also, we don't know what we're doing next year. So if you if you want to help out decide what weird gimmick we have next year in terms of what movies we're reviewing, head over to patreon.com forward slash oldiebuddygoodypod. There is a public poll up right now. You don't even need to be subscribed to check it out that will help us decide what we do next year. We'll probably figure that out by the end of next november um and all the all the links in the, in the episode description drop us a comment on youtube say how bad we are i i love mm. i love the negative comments on youtube they are yes. so funny please ask why this isn't the movie <laughs> posted on youtube uh we love that comment that's our favorite comment it's like wait a minute this isn't the movie what the heck but anyway, that is uh, the whole episode. Zach, you have got to pick next week's episode because I did, of course, pick all three Hitchcock movies for last oh, week's that's episode. Right. So you're picking next week as well from 1962, and you got a whole. You got some good options for this one. Oh yeah. So Sajo, we've got To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh. Uh, which is an option, you know, a classic storybook uh, brought to the live screen. Storybook. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like classic book. <laughs> and classic yes. book. It's a story and a book. I love the picture book. Yeah, I love yeah, the picture yeah. book of To Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> they really captured that middle America racism so beautifully. In <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, no, that is a very good one. Well, but Zach, you got books being turned into movies. You could pick Stanley Kubrick's Lolita. Don't do that. Don't pick that. What about The Music Man? Hey, great musical. We've also done quite a few Prison Break movies. You could do Birdman of Alcatraz, where Burt Lancaster has to escape Alcatraz. The Longest Day. Mm, the Shortest Night. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, you've got a movie here that I have seen before. Another random film that my family had on DVD when I was growing up. Hatari, which is a John Wayne uh, professional game catchers in Africa trying to catch animals or some shit. Oh, nice. <laughs> Definitely hasn't aged well. Don't pick it. I've seen it, I think. <laughs> that sounds like they're the good guys. Um, mm. But no, I'm going to go with uh, Dr. No. <gasps> You're going with James Bond. Banana. Wow, you're picking uh, the the first full length James Bond movie because at this point I think James Bond was just on TV. So now you know it's now it's in the now it's in the movies. So we got, got Sean Connery. Yeah, Casino, Casino Royale was adapted into a like a short one off um, uh, like uh, evening performance for television. It had and, and they made James Bond an American, so he was Jimmy Bond <laughs> and. Um, and Peter Peter Lorre, the great Peter Lorre, played um, played uh, Le Chief. But Zach, you're picking Doctor No, and we have done we did uh, the Living Daylights, I think, on the show a couple of years ago. So we have done some James Bond before, and you famously think that they are all very different movies that aren't the same movie done twenty times. That's your opinion of James Bond. Absolutely, I think they are different films with different names in their titles. <laughs> no, like they they are different films. Indeed. Well, anyway, we'll do that next week. Um, that's the that's the whole episode. We'll see you then. I'm I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave this chemist uh just quietly. I'm just gonna leave before you two turn back into those uh chemist people and just argue a bit i'm just gonna i'm just gonna I leave i feel the urge to sell narcotics i feel the urge take me over leave now sandro I'm, I'm <laughs> oh i feel the urge to throw plates at you whoa plate smash sound effect i feel the urge to throw my cups at you no. oh no more plate sound <laughs> no no the cups sound like plates i'm leaving i'm running i'm dying yeah, down the street yeah, yeah. <laughs>